Well, we are beginning the vlog for Tuesday, uh, December 15th. Yeah, it is 18 hours and, well, eight, just 18 hours. It's 80 hours and zero minutes into the day of Tuesday, December 15th, 2020. And we're beginning our vlog. Uh, this is the opening segment. I did one late last oh, uh, I can't, was it late last night or early in the morning. I really can't remember. Uh, I've been in the midst of a, a deep dive. I have a little bit more to go tonight. Actually, I have a, a fair bit more to go tonight. I have another four or five hours of deep dive research to continue to finish uh, before it moves into another segment. Uh, and it just what happens is that when you're working on projects, depending on where the project is. It can get a little compl complex because after you've watched something, it, it molds you, you. You you think about it. It becomes part of. Uh, well, slowly, it becomes part of your existence. And this is the nature of noces. And noces is compared to standard academic knowledge and or or intellectualism. Uh Intellectualism is abstract, uh, not really, uh, it, it doesn't have to have any degree of, 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 of solidity or reality to it. Gnosis takes, takes this a, a, a significant step further in that it has to, you have to be able to experience the, the, the knowledge the gnosis within your life. It is it, something that not only do you understand, have, have an intellectual understanding of in terms of a portion or a part, but you actually have to have uh, uh, some form of experience, some so, some form of what we call the, the beyond knowledge. And I'm not talking about the university of life. This is, this is, it, it's, it's something that it, those who are practitioners of the past, of, of a path, right, the path practitioners, understand this, that there is a sense of knowledge beyond what they have in their books and what they have in their their, their physical libraries in terms of the intellectual path, uh, that the Gnosis path is significantly different and that there is a component there uh, uh, from experience that this doesn't exist within the intellectual aspect. In other words, the intellectual aspect is lacking, it's missing. It is not what we call a holistic experience, uh, or even to say holistic itself, because there is no there is no experience within the academic. There are certain feelings and nuances within the academic, and it, 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 but a large chunk of the stuff can be just chalked up to hallucination or or illusion. It's not something that's real. Uh, but the thing is, at the same time, is that what has to what 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 a person has to be careful with is that. Not all gurus who are on a path are not necessarily on a good path, nor do they they fully understand the path itself. Uh, if the path is always infinite, then you would never have a total or complete understanding of the path. Uh, you only have a partial understanding of it. And so you're simply on a path rather than the path. And you kind of, <laughs> and this is part of your faith, this is where faith comes in from a practitioner. As you hope that the sum total of what you've done in your life, in terms of being on the path, uh, is sufficient to get you into in, into the realms of immortality, and this is the the ultimate goal is immortality. So, because once the other thing is once you have immortality, then everything else is sort of will will fall afterwards because you have immortality. You have infinite amount of time to continue on. Uh, doing whatever you're doing or, or, or achieve whatever you want to achieve because you now have infinite time. Uh, the question now is, is that where do you go from, you know, how do you sum up your life? How uh, are you in the, on the right path? And it's, it's, what you'll find is that if you study uh, the paths, there, and there are multiple different paths, multiple different understandings, is that there's always a left and a right. The left all, which is towards physicality, is always significantly more physical. The right, which is towards spirituality, uh, denies the denies the pleasures of the body, denies 
the physical senses in terms of uh, your, your, your sensational, your, 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 your sensualness. Uh, and in, in, see, sensual is not specifically sexual. Sexual is one of the sensualities. It's, uh, uh, but there are several more in terms of the physicality, uh, in terms of your physical existence that, uh, are, are, are there as well. What happens is our society tends to focus on the more sexual, uh, as, as a particular focus. It's the same thing with intercourse. Intercourse does not necessarily, is not specific to, se to, to sexuality. It is our assumption within society today that we assume that any intercourse would be sexual. Uh, and so, but the thing is that that's not necessarily the case. I'll, to understand this, this is where you go in and you start reading the dictionary. And what you want to do is you want to find dictionaries that are outside of our frame of reference. Well, uh, because you can't go forward from our frame of reference, so you can't get a future dictionary. You can go into the past, and typically, if you go every ten years, you'll see how words begin to change. And you'll see and you'll, dictionaries. This is, you'd have to go to find an old bookstore or, or, or something like that, and you peruse their stacks and sort of see what old books are around, and see you have old dictionaries and stuff like that. And once you do that, you'll be able to. There's a whole treasure trove there because. When you go back, let's say you pick up a book from 1900 on medicine, or this, even the dictionary. The dictionary in 1900 is, is significantly different from the from the dictionary now. As a matter, matter of fact, the dictionary is much larger, much more detailed, uh, and they have these drawings, these carvings. They're basically carvings because you can't, you, you don't actually draw in terms of the printed page. Uh, you actually carve. They're a carving, uh, and what you're seeing is you're seeing some. Uh, artists who carved this whole thing out. So it, it, you're seeing, uh, including the stitching, the, the book work, you're seeing the bookmaking art. There is an art to bookmaking. That, that, that's your lithography. And there's an entire art there. So there is a a, a, a sense of, of touch and feel to a real book than compared to the digital existence. The problem, uh, the digital existence is great because you have so much more information and access to so much, to so much more information than you ever could possibly imagine in terms of the, the physical library. Uh, but at the same time, you have to, uh, you have to sort of ask the question, does this is possibility, and if this is true uh, back in the printed page day, are you looking at a forgery? Has things been, have things been changed? If you're looking at a web page, you don't know whether it's done today or the day before. They may tell you that it's old. And that you're looking at older stuff, but you don't know that. Where if you go pick up a dictionary and you see when it was printed and, and how long it's been and how long, what, what edition you're talking about, uh, you can see how old the book is. You can see how old the information is in there. And that gives you a better sense of where your surroundings in terms of going, stepping outside your current existence. And this is sort of, this is sort of the nature of gnosis is you're stepping outside your own existence, you're stepping outside your own eyes, you're stepping outside your own perspective. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for other perspectives, and this is one of the reasons why I actually end up watching Lion LeBron. I do him now. I kind of peruse by him uh, on a semi-weekly basis, and that's because he's got a perspective that other people don't have. You can go to most of the pundits up there. And their perspective is the same as everybody else's. They're, they're like a carbon copy of things. So when you see one, you sort of see them all. Uh, where Lionel LeBron, and there's another another one, another person called Yvette Carnell, and she's on the Democrat side of things. Uh, uh, ironically enough, uh, Lionel used to be on the Republican side of things, but now uh, on, the, on the Democrat side of things, but now he's on the Republican side. Republican side. Uh, Yvette Carnell is still within the Republican, uh, uh, the Democrat side. But she's not happy with what's going what's going on, and so she is one of these people who voices her concerns. She is not a lemming. She's not a, a parrot who repeats the, the party line. She she asks and vocalizes uh, questions about what the narrative is and what the narrative should be. If the, if you know, if she has a, a view as to what things should be going on, that's the narrative. And what should be said, how things should be handled. That's the narrative, in many cases. She questions it. She doesn't simply take it as everybody else does. And so what happens is you're looking for people. You're looking for people's personal experiences. 
And when you see that, and this is what I get in the vlogs too, you get their personal experience. Uh, that's something worth watching because you're now having something, you're now being able to step outside your eyes. Uh, that's my ride, and it's time to go. There's the bus. Well, it looks like I've got the, I've got the balance right in terms of the framing. But it's been a very long day. It is four hours and 18 minutes into the 16th day of Wednesday, December uh, 16th, uh, 2020. I forgot in the middle of the thing what I was talking about. Uh, what I was talking about as uh, my mind drifted. I've been able to achieve uh, something I never really thought I'd be able to achieve, and that is to spend an entire day in meditation. And there are a number of ways of meditation, a number of methods of meditation. Some of the monks that I've heard about and read about did their meditations while they were farming, while they were doing certain specific work, uh, you know, even manual labor. They were able to take their, their, their presence of mind and focus it in such a manner that it was meditation no matter what they were doing and that sort of a state that I have been sort of trying to get to, and that's where I am right now. Uh, the line between awake and sleep has more or less disappeared, because uh, the thoughts and meditation continues from, from awake into the sleep. Uh, and now, it's, even as I'm doing my deep dive research, it's still within the deep dive research, uh, I just spent... Oh, uh, Six hours now. I did another eight hours yesterday. So about fourteen hours worth of research. I still have uh, more to do. There is a deeper, deeper dive that I have to do in this particular area. And it's always in about this, it, 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 the areas of of, of study of, of concern are now starting to merge together. They're starting to come together. So that when I'm studying one area that maybe to others will seem completely distant and remote with no connection to the other, they are indeed connected. For like, like example, the, the discussion of Trump and Biden, one would think that these are two totally different topics. Or the discussion that, that goes, that centers around the current, uh, 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 uh pandemic issue. And you see, people see, argument, war, strife on either side. They see divine. But yet at the same time, what they don't see is the commonality that, that, that people have, the connection within history that both sides have to the entire dynamic of the world. That we, we, we are often in t times of peace and on in times of war. And preceding war, there's always a mechanism that divides us to a point where we are willing to go to war, we are willing to accept war, even amongst, even if the divisions split along family lines or split families within two, it goes down the middle of the family and you have one group of people on one side and one group of people on the other side. And if you look at the battles very carefully, the battles themselves are not about particular issues, they're about more often than not, their status issues. And we defend our positions and assert authorities, and this is about, this is about asserting authority based on our status. Status is extremely important to a lot of people. What you have, uh, how you have it, uh, what you should have and what you shouldn't have is based on these particular concepts of status. And the people who, in many cases, are very angry, I know the people who have serious anger problems, 
their anger, when you listen to what they say, if you pay attention to what they say long enough, again, it's an issue of status. Well, I should have had this, and I should have had that. Why does someone over there who is not as smart as I am, or as good as I am, why do they have that over there and I don't have this? You know, and again, this is, this is, again, an issue of status. It's not an issue of, of, of anything other than that. And this is what happens with, with the election. The, the election was issued, but, but had nothing to do, the, the, had nothing to do with the realities of what's going on today. And we, we hear them talking about the Great Reset. Well, what are they doing with the Great Reset? If you actually sit down and look at what's going on, they're not helping anybody. They're not improving poverty. They're actually making it worse. How does taking someone's job away and leaving them poor, leaving them out uh, without a house, without a home, how does that improve things? When they did the Great Reset, you know, they say, oh, we've never had the Great Reset before, but you have. That's what happened in Ukraine. When the, when the communists took, finally took over uh, and they had the region of the Ukraine, which is uh, an amazing... Uh, 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 area of farming. They took the area over, the scientists took the area over, they had the Department of Agriculture, and they ran the whole area. You know what ended up happening? They weren't able to produce enough food, and close to t 10 million people starved to death. That was a great reset for the Ukrainian area. We saw the same thing under uh, Mao. We certainly saw this with the killing fields of Pol Pot. And this is the Khmer Rouge. If you study history, and this is not within the textbooks, the te textbooks are typically written by groups of people, and they're within the narrative. You have to search out some of the original materials, uh, and they are difficult to find sometimes, but if you spend enough time doing it, you can do it. Uh, it just is not something that's short. This is something that will take you weeks and months to do. And you can indeed find how history comes in, how history evolves. And you can see how characters like today, like Trump, like even in the current time, how Trump and Biden fit in with this, within the flow of history, within the flow of personal understandings and within personal behaviors. Politics and behaviors of society are, are very close. We see there's a longer period of, of, of repetition in terms of human behavior. We're back in, in, in the era of, of human evolution. And we have groups of people at top trying to shift human evolution to get rid of the social problems that are in there, believing that everything is genetic and we have to evolve man to a, high, evolve man to a higher form. And this involves eliminating the people who are considered to be defective. And we see this with euthanasia, we see this with with, uh, with, with abortion, these are these that, that feed into these narratives. And we also see a shorter cycle of hist history when we're going back to the 1970s, is that we're, and actually in 1975, the, 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 the ideas that were brought forward by the Carter administration I'll come right back in again, and as these prisoners from these places like Rikers Island and in California are released into the streets, the violence level is, is, is picking up, and New York is slowly being destroyed. We see the destruction of New York. Chicago never left the 70s. It was always a very violent place, and we see after a democratic administration, after a democratic administration in Chicago, and again, this is about this is on the mayor level. This is not this is not on the presidential or even on the state level. We see how how they operate and the level of corruption that's in there. And we realize that if you go back and look at the movies like Dirty Harry or Chuck Norris or any of these other guys, including Bruce Willis, a lot of Hollywood in the eighties was based on this concept of, of of society run amok where you had entire cities like New York and, and LA that were nothing but open air prisons. 
That's what we have, I think, the movie Escape from New York and again, Escape from L.A. The, 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 again, these are our, our post-apocalyptic uh, scenarios on what's going to, what, what, the, what the United States is going to look like. But this is true for other cities. It's not just true for the United States, but it's true globally across the world that you have something like this. And so we begin to realize that things aren't isolated, that, 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 that events do sit within a context of history. It's just not within the t context of, the, of textbook history. Te textbook history is simply a perspective. And we see how in many cases, we, as you sit down, you start opening your mind, and you begin to understand how intellectual knowledge is, in really is really the lowest level of knowledge that you can have, that there is so much more out there. It just depends on whether or not you can get outside of yourself. If you can, do, can detach yourself from your own perspective and start accepting and bringing in other people's perspective, perspectives. But that takes a, 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 it's a journey along the path of knowledge, of gnosis. And it, 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 it requires a number of meditative techniques. And I've not reached an end, I've reached a new opening. There is so much more in front of me that the next decision, it'll be sort of as I do these meditations, bring in the new understanding, bring in the new possibilities as well as to where I'm going next. And this is where we end before we start again in the next few, and, 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 before we start again in about eight hours from now, but it is Wednesday. I'm going to be taking some time off, but I'll will be in the other realm sleeping, doing the work in there, and we'll see what happens when I wake up, and I'll give you a bit of a discuss. We'll have a bit of a discussion as to what what goes on in in the dream world and how things end up. <laughs>